Hi there, it's Natasha from YMO Homeschool, and today I'm going to share with you how not grass our star spangled story is going for us if you're new to my channel welcome i'm a mom to six kids i homeschool five of them and not grass has sent us this set in exchange for my review and to share it with you guys and so that's what i'm going to do now that we are a few uh, units in. If you want kind of a general overview of how this works and a flip through, I have a video, a link in the description that you can go check out. So this is just going to be how these first three units have gone for us. I am using this with my first grader who is six, she'll be seven in November, and my third grader who is eight, she won't turn nine until March. So those are the two girls that I am using this with. Now I will start off by saying that we absolutely love it love it. My girls are excited every time it is time to do history, which is so fabulous. Now, I will say, I'll be perfectly honest, that my third grader gets more out of this than my first grader. And what I mean by that is she's able to retain more of the information than my first grader does. However, um, my first grader still loves it. She loves the project. She loves the songs and dances. She's really enjoying it. She's just not retaining as much information as my third grader does. So my suggestion would be if you have a first grader, I would actually wait to use it with them if they're your only child or they're your oldest child or they're the oldest of the youngest or <laughs> whatever. If they're your only first to fourth grader, I would wait until third or fourth grade to use it because I think they will get more out of it. That being said, if you have a third or fourth grader and a you know, first or second grader little tag along, absolutely use it with them too. Okay, so we each day, this is kind of how we do the lesson. We read the lesson and then we do whatever questions there are. So the review questions and these review questions are kind of how I gauge if my kids have kind of got the point, if they've understood the main points of the lesson. And so I think those are really great um, to gauge that. And we do, we always do the lesson activities, the literature, we read at night, and I will talk about that in just a minute, but we don't read the literature during our history time. We actually do it at bedtime reading time. And um, we always do the unit review, which is always like some sort of project, and I'll show you some of those. Those have been really fun. And then the hands-on history ideas, we sometimes do those and sometimes don't. If it's something like um, build with blocks or something, we haven't typically done those. It just depends on what those are. I have been um, adding a few things. Each lesson I look up on YouTube to see if I can find a video that goes along with it. I actually started making a playlist. It was kind of an afterthought like, oh, I should make a playlist. That way when I use it again for my toddler, Mom. hold on, then I will already have those, you know, those videos in a playlist and I won't have to search them again. Um, sorry, getting a text from my husband. Um, and so, uh, that's one thing I've been adding. Of course, it's not necessary to add, but it's been fun. I actually pull up the video on my phone and I airplay it to the TV in the homeschool room. And so it's, I usually just like a three to five minute video, a short video that covers whatever we're learning. Now, the timeline book, how we're using that, um, it's at the end of each unit, you go through the timeline book. And what we're doing is my six-year-old reads the date and my eight-year-old reads the caption. And so they love doing this. So they, you know, do it together on the floor and, and they go through this. And I think this is just a good way for them to kind of see how things fit chronologically. So we enjoy this. So you do this at the end of each unit. And then of course we have the workbook and my girls really like this. And there's little lesson reviews and things in here. And you can see one of the lesson reviews. And so I'm gonna draw the map of England and she was convinced that she wanted to put stars even though those are not part of I mean the map the flag part of the flag in fact I think another flag a different country has stars and but you know six-year-olds what are you gonna do so she doesn't have that quite right but you know that's all right <laughs> 
Here's another review for you. So this is going really well. They like this. The Rhythms and Rhymes book, they love this. It comes with a um, MP3 audio CD. Hold on one second. And I put this in our DVD player and I'm able to play that. Uh, we learned a dance, which was super, super fun. We even got my two-year-old involved because we needed a fourth person for this dance and nobody else would do it with us. So we asked everybody and we're like, come on, you know, asked our older sisters and things and nobody wanted to do this dance. So we called in the two-year-old and she actually was able to catch on too. We're, we haven't quite mastered the dance, but when we do, I think I'll record it and uh, show it to you guys but it's this hole in the wall dance and they actually have a, it says visit this website to watch a demonstration video. And so that's exactly what we did. And we just watched it over and over and tried to follow along over and over and over and over trying to master this dance. We're just getting confused on the ending when the partner switch, it's throwing us off. But the girls loved that. So this Rhythm and Rhymes book has been really fun. And whenever we're doing like an art project or something to go along with it, I just play the CD in the background and they really enjoy that. So that's going great. And okay, so now I will talk about the literature. This is the first book that is scheduled for you. And let me just tell you, this is my new favorite book. It's Benjamin West and his Cat Grimalkin by Marguerite Henry. She makes all the um, the horse books, you know, Sea Star, King of the Wind, Misty of Chincoteague, that sort of thing. Um, and I had no idea this book even existed, but it's about um, Benjamin West, who's a real person. He's considered the father of American painting. He was a Quaker boy. This is an amazing story. I won't say more than that, but and it's about his cat, Grimalkin. And I used to have a black cat when I was a little kid, and so I just was immediately drawn to this book. But um, we read this at yeah. bedtime and we just read one chapter a night. But my girls loved this book so much. They would say like, just one more chapter, please, just one more chapter. And I mean, they never do that to me. So that tells you this is a good book. And let me tell you, this went so beautifully with the lessons in Knotgrass. Now, it really didn't have anything to do with unit one, but units two and unit three, it went so perfect with. In fact, um, there's an Indian chief, Samusan, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, that Benjamin West um, knows in this story and um, it went perfect with Unit 2 and we watched a video um, on YouTube and it talked about um, Samusan, I'm sorry about the name, and um, the girls were just like, we read about him last night in our book and you know they just it was amazing so this is goes beautifully with units two and three i mean just seamlessly i love it okay so now i'll show you some of the projects and things we've been doing one thing i added was sarah morton's day when we were learning about the pilgrims i mean this book is just such a great great book for you know learning about pilgrims and in fact there is a recipe in here and we meant to make it, but then I think we all forgot. We were going to make the recipe. Um, forget where it is. But anyways, um, we forgot to do that. So we'll probably do that at some point. Uh, so that's one thing I added. Another thing we made was some Pilgrim puppets. These are from our Abeka Art Projects book. And I had these. I pulled them out. And so we made some Pilgrim puppets. So that was fun. And <laughs> my toddler is pulling out her puppet. Uh, one of the projects we did was we made these um, to America and to England with the Mayflower. This is an origami Mayflower boat. My and new hat. Your new hat, very cute. And it sits on the paper, and one way is to America, and one way is to England, and that's pretty cute. And my daughter drew like an octopus and some fish and stuff. So that was really fun. They enjoyed the origami. Another project we did with unit one was make this pottery. I just got some air dry clay at Michael's craft store. One of my daughters has marbles in it. The other one doesn't have anything in it. Um, it does give you a recipe to make the clay, but for me, a lot of times I need 
simpler or like easier, whatever. Um, not that making clay is hard, yeah. but Ooh. for me, it was just easier to go buy the clay <laughs> and have it already made. Yeah. So that's what I did. So we, we made it one day and then it had to dry for a few days. Um, this is the air dry clay and then they painted it another day. And then, you're so cute. And then another thing we did just this last weekend was we made a Charles II hat shop. Now, it gives you directions in there how to make these hats with cups. And we went to Dollar Tree on Saturday with the intention of buying cups. And I came out spending $20 on all kinds of materials. <laughs> My husband and I call the Dollar Tree the $20 store because... You go in with good intentions, but you come out spending $20 every time. And that's what happened. But it was so worth it. So we went into Dollar Tree, and then we saw all these various hats that they had. So I let the girls, my 6 and 8-year-old plus my toddler, each choose three hats. And then we picked up all kind of stuff to decorate them with. So we got sequins and feathers and pom-poms. Okay, get yours. And we designed some hats for Charles II, so that's King Charles, um, for his hat shop. Now, of course, those hats were made from beaver skin, and these are a little more glamorous, but it was super fun. They all had a blast. I'm not sure. Where is it? Okay, go look. And so these, it was just so fun. They sat at the table, spread out all the materials and the glue, and they spent, you know, probably an hour or more making their hats. They just had a blast. And then we made a Charles II uh, hat shop sign, and they put price tags on their hats. I had brought, bought price tags at Dollar Tree too, and they priced their hats, and then I was the customer, and I bought their hats, and we had our play cash register and so I would purposely not give them the exact amount of money so that they would then have to make change for me and so it was like a math lesson too we did this on Saturday we spent a few hours on this project and it was just although it cost $20 it was just priceless they just had a blast you're awesome <laughs> yeah, you're so cute. So they really, really, really enjoyed this project. And so I'll show you that actually in the book. What it looks like in the book. This project here. And so as you can see, it tells you um, directions on how to make these hats. But we just went a little wild with it. But you know what? That is the beauty of homeschooling. And when we were making the hats, I actually reviewed the lesson with them and read, read about um, King Charles again and so that they could remember, you know, who this guy was and why we were making these hats. So, um, but we had a blast. So as you can see, this is going so well for us. We absolutely love it. I highly recommend it. And if you have any more questions, let me know and I will do my best to answer them. And uh, keep watching for more updates about Knockgrass.